Hey guys, Ruckus Gaming here, and I'm coming at you with something a little different today. I'm doing a seated challenge run. I know I've been posting a lot of videos for the other three characters as I'm trying to raise their ascension levels, but Ironclad has always been my favorite, so I wanted to do something a little special. Get a new video out there for you. I got this seed off of a Reddit post, and as you can see, it is a Pandora's box switch that is nothing but ruptures. Full disclosure, this is far from my first attempt at this seed. Uh, the first act is going to go pretty fast because I had to play this over and over to find a viable line to actually get through the end of this act. With that being said, I don't want to talk too much when there's not a lot going on, so I will just let this play and then kind of put in commentary as necessary. I think actually right at this moment I am running to the kitchen to go get something, hence the long pause, but we'll get going real quick here. There we are. I am doing this on Ascension Zero because this is simply just not possible on A20. The jaw worm will kill you every time. Uh, it may be possible on something perhaps below 20, maybe below 17 when those hallway fights get buffed. It may be possible. I didn't try it out though. Maybe you can give it a shot. We survive jaw worm, pick up the headbutt, basically just to get bash out of the discard pile and play it as much as possible. So I'm not getting just all ruptures every single draw. Against the cultist, we're just trusting the process, doing headbutt bash as much as we can, picking up wild strike for some much needed damage. The blood potion here is completely necessary. Otherwise, we're going to die. True Grit gives us block and exhaust, another very useful card early in the run. We have been blessed with a second blood potion and shrug it off, adding more block, adding some draw, super, super key to the rest of this run. The damage taken there from that event was a little risky, but I think the upgrades in the long run ended up making a huge difference. Getting some strength from that rupture a little faster and also getting more block from that shrug. You can see I'm playing it a little fast and loose with these events, but my main strategy was just to hit as many campfires as possible. I don't take an elite in the entire run, just because I really need the healing. Also, once I get deeper into the run, these moves are going to be a lot less calculated, especially in Act 3. Uh, I only got to Act 3 a couple different times, whereas I was doing Act 1 over and over and over again. Act 2 was really the big sticking point. Once I got out of Act 2, it was pretty simple from there. Anger I took for two different reasons. Number one, there's burns coming from Hexaghost. Also, thinning out the ruptures by adding more cards to the deck was very useful. The Combust is really what makes this deck kick. With that self damage, we're finally able to make use of all these ruptures and we get it right on turn one. Now that I've got the basic bones of this deck, 
the strategy is going to be play bash to get the vulnerable. If I get an early combust, play those ruptures as soon as possible. And if there's no early combust, go for just straight damage or block. Don't waste time playing early ruptures if I'm not getting anything out of it. My many, many attempts at Act 1 tell me that I don't need this blood potion. I know from lots of experience. And I know that I'm going to need it in Act 2. So this is really just a race for me to get Hexaghost down before I combust myself to death. And there you have it. Fire Potion is very nice. And none of those cards actually do very much. The Limit Break you might think, but with the amount of ruptures I've got, I don't really need to double my strength. I'm not very concerned with upgrading anything, and that fusion hammer is just going to help me get more ruptures off more quickly. do take a second shrug just because I know I don't want to do tons of blocking but while I'm waiting for that combust to come into play it's very helpful to make sure I don't lose too much HP too quickly and with the headbutt it's pretty easy to get these shrugs and blocks in play when I need them. You could see that little moment of hesitation there where I was trying to choose between a rupture and a bash. And it's basically just because the math of all the different fights that I know are coming in the future, I felt like getting that 10 damage on that one turn from bash is going to do a lot more and preventing me from taking too much damage rather than waiting for the strength to build up turn by turn. I was trying to do as much damage as quickly as possible. continue to be blessed by some early combusts. Those make the fights so much easier. It's the handful of fights where I'm drawing until the bottom of my deck to get that combust that are really, really sketchy. The sword boomerang with headbutt is very nice. And having all that strength with even a very simple multi-attack is very, very valuable in a deck like this. I don't think I would have taken that Wild Strike if it wasn't upgraded, but Wild Strike with the Bash does a lot of damage, even without extra strength. So I felt like that could really help out in those fights where I was trying to stall and get to the deck where I wanted it to be. I think this may actually be one of the single hardest fights in the entire run just because of the amount of damage it does to me ends up killing me later so a lot of the act 2 resets I had were trying to figure out in what ways I could reduce the damage taken from that goddamn plant here just skip the cards I don't want to fill it up with too much thankfully lots of fires on this path so I can recover HP
Took a cheeky little armaments there, just because I know I'm not going to be upgrading at any of these fires. So having that does provide quite a bit of value in a deck that's fairly simple. You also love to see that eternal feather providing extra healing for each campfire visited, which is exactly what I needed on this run. Perhaps not possible without it. The pommel strike was very tempting, but I think in a deck where I'm shuffling wounds into my draw pile, the value of knowing exactly what is in my discard pile and what's coming up next and choosing the exact card I want was a lot more valuable than just plus one draw. That shop there was also incredibly useful. It gave me potions I needed. It gave me cards I needed, like the pommel. It gave me a card remove just to make my deck a tiny bit faster. Very, very, very useful shot for me at that moment. You can already see some of the misplays happening. I didn't really need to use anger on that sentry. It would have died to combustion anyway. But I'm getting to a point where I have not been this far in the run very many times. And I'm kind of just winging it and hoping for the best. As I alluded to earlier with the many runs that came to an end in act two this sneko coming out of the unknown room was a big reason for a lot of those i was just coming into this with not enough hp and sneko was taking me down every single time i had quite a few attempts just trying to figure out how to preserve enough hp to get through this exact combat I think this is maybe only my second or third attempt at the Act 2 boss, 
very, very fortunate to have that early combust out. It makes a huge difference, but I'm still pretty unsure whether or not 42, 43 HP is gonna be enough to outlast the collector, especially with that hyper beam that I know is coming very soon. And my number one concern is just scaling up as quickly as possible to hopefully avoid that. You can see more of those silly little misplays, putting a defend back into the draw and then drawing it with Flash of Steel. Very counterproductive, wasted some energy there. Probably didn't need that last turn. I should have headbutted an anger back and then pulled that out with my shrug, but it didn't matter. Take the offering for some much needed draw and energy. And this runic cube is actually fantastic given the fact that I'm gonna be taking damage every turn. It's gonna help me see more cards. And that is exactly what I need with a deck like this. Given how spooky some of the act three fights are, my main goal for this entire act is just hit up that middle path that is almost nothing but unknown rooms, hoping for events or shops or surprise relics. But apart from that, I just don't want any of these fights. I'm trying to get to Time Eater with as much of my HP intact as possible. don't know what I was doing with that anger. He would have been killed with the combust anyway. I think I just often kind of forgot about the factor that combust not only damages me, but others. I was only really considering the self damage taken because the small five points of damage it does per turn or seven points of damage it does per turn compared to the damage I was getting from the strength uh, was so negligible that I was often just kind of forgetting that it was actually doing any damage but it was quite helpful in several instances. And the metamorphosis here, giving me some random cards, actually ends up becoming quite useful. You'll see it later. Now you can see the value of having that runic cube with something like the offering. Also the flash of steel, adding just a little bit of draw. Now this deck is actually like halfway functional. Obviously you don't want this many ruptures in the normal deck, but considering what I started with, this deck functions not too badly at this point.
Before I recorded this full run, I did actually complete and win this seed once already, so I do know it is possible, but I've also not done this third act more than once. So there's a lot of unknowns still at play. I have no real good memory of what I did the first time, so I'm still basically just figuring this out as I go. Getting that Champion's Belt and Bag of Marbles back to back was a really, 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 really nice surprise and made it much easier to get through the rest of this act. There was an audible groan on my part when I got another one of these Shapes fights, especially with a spiker in it. I didn't want to go through several more attempts trying to min-max and figure out the best way to stall and hopefully reduce damage taken from the spiker. So I kind of just did a full send on this one and hoped for the best. spent a long time debating with myself over if I really cared that much about the damage from the thorns on that spiker, but considering I've got the campfire and eternal feather, I was really hoping that that would heal me back to full, but then I have to deal with this mess. And this is really where that metamorphosis helped a lot, giving me lots of zero cost attacks that I could play with the draw coming from runic cube and hopefully just getting out of this without sustaining too much damage.
this whole fight was kind of painful. I was feeling a little pessimistic and not thinking very carefully with a lot of these plays. Kind of giving up. Didn't think I was going to outlast Time Eater with all of the damage taken in this fight. Feeling a little bit discouraged. So I'm not making great plays, but you should always finish out runs anyway. You never know what's going to happen. And there you have it, Fairy in a Bottle is exactly what I was hoping for, considering that I could see a death coming quite quickly. And that gave me a little bit more hope. The Eternal Feather, the Campfire got me back up to 44. Now I'm, now I'm feeling okay. I am being very careful with the card counter here, not playing the pummel, mostly because I want to build up strength first and really get a lot of value out of it. Upgrading the metamorphosis, giving me lots of zero cost attacks, those are going to come in handy. And really just waiting for the combust to come out so I can start building strength. But the deck is not cooperating trying to draw as much as possible just to get to it and having a hard time finding it. Extremely fortunate that the one card I got to play there was the Closed line, saving me just a small amount of damage, giving me maybe one or two more turns of combust before I die to that, regardless of whatever time eater is doing. Having weakened on multi-attacks is so useful. Even if each attack is only reduced by one or two, every little bit adds up over time. There you go, fairy in a bottle coming in to save the day. Thankfully it was just one big attack and not a multi-attack that turn. Lined up exactly how I needed it to. And with a zero cost fiend fire from that metamorphosis, I'm able to do massive damage, getting him not just below half health, but quite close to dying. So when he spends this turn buffing himself, trying to get back to half health, all I have to do is one easy little sword boomerang and then find any kind of attack at all. Thankfully, I've got the shrug, I've got battle trance, and that's all that I need. Time Eater's dead. This was my first time doing a challenge seed like this. I had a lot of fun with it, even if it was a little bit stressful <laughs> there at the end, hoping I could outlast and make it all the way through. If there are any seeds that you guys have that are pretty interesting, whether it's a Pandora's box switch or something like that, let me know and I'll give it a shot. I'd love to do a couple more of these wacky, weird little runs. 
thanks for sticking around and watching all the way to the end. I'd love it if you guys could drop a comment, like, share, subscribe, all that good business. And in the very near future, I'm hoping to get a much better mic so the sound quality will be improved. And once again, thanks for watching.